with daily visits to the cemetery. Even at 254, day 254. Melissa and Vincent Murphy count the days since their children were murdered. Five-year-old Sophia Grace and seven-year-old Noah Kent, the youngest of their five. It was just like, this is my, this is my first day without my, without my Noah and my Sophia. And at 19, their oldest son, Malik, is charged with stabbing his brother and sister to death and stabbing his father. Now, and Molly, this one, well, it has a whole community upset. The crime stunned the Colorado Springs yeah, community. community that deadly attack happened at about 1 o'clock this morning. Take me back to October 17th. What's the day like? That is a... Uh, 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 Kind of a painful part about all this is that it, it was it was a very normal, enjoyable day. Um, you know, we kind of did the same routine that we always do, and you know, had dinner, and it was a nice night, and so we were all outside as a family. And even Malik, because not all the time, Malik Malik comes outside to play with them in the evenings with the little kids, and he did that night. He was out there playing with Vinny and Elijah and Noah and everybody, and they were all playing football and. Yeah, everything was, and then we came inside and did the whole bedtime routine. And my very last sentence was, Mommy loves you. Shortly after 1 a.m., um, I awoke to the sound of Sophia's voice uh, saying, no, Malik, no. And um, got up. As soon as I reached the threshold of the doorway, uh, Malik turned, uh, met me face to face. And then um, his hand went up when he had a knife and down, on, down in my neck. I instantly reacted and just pushed him um, through the door, the garage door there, and uh, into the garage and yelled, uh, you know, yelled for help. I mean, some of the yells were for help, and some of it was uh, the realization that he is, had done what we feared he would do. For years, Vincent and Melissa stood by their son in his battles with mental illness. He'd been in and out of treatment centers for thoughts of violence, but he'd never acted on them. And therapists cleared him to be back at home. At what point do you realize that your two youngest children are dead? I remember hearing my mom when I was in that garage in between these guys. I heard my mom yell, Sophia's been stabbed. I ran inside, I left, and I didn't know they were upstairs, so I ran down to her, them to find her. And I found Noah first. I knew he was gone. Home for Malik right now is here, here at the El Paso County Correctional Center. Mom has been here to see him at least a half dozen times. Dad has been here as well, but both will never forget that very first time following the stabbing deaths of Noah and Sophia. Well, it was hard for me, uh, definitely hard for me. By this time, there was there's a lot pent up and, and built up. Malik told me that he has things he wants to say to me and his dad. He has a lot he wants to say. He said he actually sat down with his attorney and told his attorney everything that they, he wanted to say to us, and they told him not to say those things. So I remember my advice back to Malik was, well, you know, Malik, your attorneys are going to give you good courtroom advice, and then there's also your moral advice, and that's going to be different than from what they give you. I said, because you do owe your dad and I an apology and an explanation. What's your prayer and hope for him? right now, as mom and dad, what do, you, what do you want to see happen with him? Well, my hope and prayer, honestly, for him is salvation. It's for salvation. I believe in eternity. Heaven is real. God is real. And uh, so I, I that, that's what I pray for now, is, is for his salvation. There are a lot of things that we want in the flesh. We want answers, and we want to feel. We want closure, and we want you may not get those. But we may not get those. As his parents, have you reached a point of saying, I forgive you, son? Well, that is uh, definitely the battle. Um, and that, that's a long-term battle. That's something we're working through. I think it kind of reflects our, um, our personal relationship with God, where we are 
individually with our personal relationship with Christ um, is how we're walking out the road of forgiveness. Melissa and Vincent walk the forgiveness road together with every trip to the cemetery and every prayer she records in her journal. We don't have to spend our time hating Malik because God is going to vindicate us and his love will endure forever. I've allowed the truth to comfort me and give me hope. In writing, Melissa knows Malik's battle and their family's fight is a spiritual one. And there has been days when I walk away from here though with, with just a little bit better hope. My hope has more confidence, a little bit more hope in the reality of where Noah and Sophia are and how real heaven really is. Ephraim Graham, CBN News, Colorado Springs, Colorado.